What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna start getting ready to put the engine and transmission back in the 01 Stratus. As you can see, the powertrain unit is assembled and ready to go back in the car. But before we do that, we ran into a small issue when we were setting those things up. So as you can see right here, this connector is the main harness for the engine. And one of the pins right here is a little bit toasty and in the process it melted the next two pins over next to it. So we have a full repair kit for that harness connector and we're gonna start repinning a new connector, getting that all properly set back to the way it should be with the OEM materials and we're gonna get this ready to go. So we're gonna show you how that's done, how to replace wires from a connector and get this thing ready to go back on the road. So let's get started and get um, ready guys. So for a repair like this, basically the essential tools you're gonna need or what you see here, small screwdrivers, assorted pick tools, and these are pin removal tools to remove the actual metal connectors out of the pin harness itself. So you can see the pins in the connector here. There's little tabs that hold them in on the tops. And what you use these pin removal tools for is to slide in between the metal and the plastic and trip off the locking tab inside the connector and it allows you to remove all these pins like you see I've done here. I've removed all these out and you can see in the top of the connector, this little slot right here, I'll see if I can grab one. This little slot right here is where the locking tab from the connector bites into the pin so it doesn't push out when you plug the uh, connector into the other half of the harness or when you remove them. So we've got this part separated. Here's the old burnt out plug uh, you can see this section was completely melted out because the coating on this wire was either chewed off by a rodent or it was missing from the factory. So we're going to start connecting in new wires here into this part of the harness and then on the engine side of the harness we're also going to wire in a new plug and new connectors. So let's get started and get that moving. So here we're going to start off with the harness in the house. We brought the whole harness in from the motor. We're going to start by removing this cap on the back of the main plug that runs to the engine harness. This one decided to give me a little bit of a hard time, but the reason that we're going to be removing this is so we have better access to uh, the pins in the back of the connector. We'll be able to slide them out of the back side without damaging the connector or the pins if we remove this cap. Once I eventually get it off, there'll be a rubber gasket inside the connector that'll also have to be removed and then we'll have no problem sticking our pry tools in there to be able to trip off the plastic locking tabs and remove all the metal pins. So now we got that cap I was talking about removed from the plug on the harness. We're going to slide it back a little bit to expose all the wires inside. Um, I'm going to leave this plug connector on here in order to keep the wires organized and stretch them out so I can see which one I'm working with. Now right here you can see the rubber gasket that I was talking about that's inside the plug. We're going to pull that out of the connector itself and slide it back with the cap that we've just pulled off. Uh, we just need to get that out of our way. Uh, there's no real function to it right now. Um, the cap on the back of the plug is holding the wires the way I need them to be held. So this rubber gasket can just be moved and set aside. So now here we can see the back side of the connector itself. We can see how each of the pins are inserted into the connector. Uh, each one has its own little chamber inside and a locking tab at the top. This uh, blue part in the front of the connector is the locking slide that goes in and holds all the pins from the engine side of the harness in. Uh, when this connector melted, that uh, blue locking tab actually came out of the other side of the harness and got stuck in this one. You'll see me fight with that further on in this video as I'll have to remove it to be able to get all those pins out of here. So 
So next up we're going to start using our trusty pin removal tools here. We're going to begin by tripping off some of the locking tabs that hold the metal pins into the connector itself. Some of these pins were melted pretty badly. Uh, they became conjoined to the melted plastic in the connector. You'll see further on as I go into this process I'm unable to get some of them out so I end up having to cut the actual wires pretty close up to the harness. I chose to cut them close to the harness to still give myself as much usable wire in the existing harness as possible because I want to keep the OEM colors and keep the OEM wires. And we'll go ahead and speed you guys up a little bit here so you don't have to see the same process over and over. Basically I'm just going to remove one wire at a time until I get to the point where I can't remove them anymore and then I have to bring in the cutting tools. So as you see, I got the blue locking tab from the other half of the connector removed uh, from the engine side harness that's taken out of the way. Now we're left with the red locking insert and some very difficult pins that seem to not want to come out. I am able to get some out with the small screwdriver. As you can see, I pull a couple out here. And next we're going to start using a pick tool to see if I can get the red locking tab out. This proved impossible as the red locking tab was melted pretty severely into the black plastic of the connector. So I ended up, as you'll see here, having to snip all of the wires out really close to the tab so I could get the connector freed from the rest of the harness and leave myself some good wiring still left over to uh, affix the new connector and the new wiring onto. So now begins the easier and more enjoyable, for me at least, part of this whole job. You're going to see me strip off about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of the rubber coating from each wire, so I have about that much copper exposed at the end. Uh, what I'll do with that copper is use the wiring connector from the Mopar repair kit, and we're going to use their wiring, as you can see here, the green and blue wires that come from the kit. We're going to use those, strip off a little bit at the end, place them together with the exposed copper of the existing harness from the car and use the little brass crimp connector that they provide in the kit. Once that's done, we'll heat shrink each connection so there's no water intrusion and no shorting on the new exposed connector. We'll get all those crimped, heated, and the harness will be repaired and we'll just watch that process go along. So now we're about halfway done with repinning the new connector here. I'm using the old wiring harness end cap to keep the order in which that each of these wires go so I put the pins in the correct slot in the new connector. They are all numbered on the back of that cap so it makes it a little bit easier. Um, they start from 1 through 14 and it's pretty easy to follow the order. Now what we're going to do here is snap all the pins into the new connector. Um, each of the pins has a locking tab as I mentioned before. All you'll have to do here is slide them in and make sure that they click in. You'll hear the click and you'll feel it when they lock into the new connector. Um, just make sure that when you're doing this these new wires are pretty stiff and they can be a little bit difficult to work with and get them to fit into the new connector. Just be sure that you leave yourself enough wiring to play with so that you can move the new end cap and the new rubber boot back as far as I have here and that you don't have any issues getting these slid into the new connector.
getting the last of the pins locked into the connector. Of course, the last one has to go off of alignment, but there we go, we've got it in. Now we're gonna put the new rubber boot in the back of the connector to make this connector watertight. Make sure that everything's insulated properly. We don't want any issues with shorting or wire wear like we had in the last connector. We see how the results of that turned out. And we're just gonna lock down the locking cap on the back of the connector. Make sure all that clicks in and that'll hold the rubber boot in properly so we insulate all of the pins. And now we're gonna grab the red locking insert from the kit and we're gonna toss that in the connector. Make sure we line it up the right way and it just fits right around all the pins and slides back in. We'll give it a little help here with the screwdriver and get that locked in. So all those pins are in and secured. They're not gonna go anywhere. They won't back out or pull out when you connect them into the engine side of the other harness. So this repair looks good. And all of the connections are properly crimped and they are heat shrink together. So we shouldn't have any issues there. Now we're gonna go ahead and tape up all of the new connections, make sure those are all insulated with electrical So tape. we got this harness all repaired with a new connector, all new pins, it's really looking good. We're ready to put this harness back on the engine, get that all wired up, and then next we're gonna start repairing this connector here. I've got the main connector removed and all the pins are exposed. We're gonna cut these back a few inches so we have good wire to work with. Repeat the same process that we did with this connector on this harness. So let's get started, get this thing fully repaired. I've chosen to wire up the engine and transmission basically the way they do at the factory before they install them in the car. Uh, this makes it a lot easier, especially with this specific motor, as there's a lot of wiring that runs under the intake manifold and along the back side of the motor, which is really difficult to reach once it's installed because the wiper cowl hangs over basically the whole rear side of the motor here. As you can see on the right side of the engine, that whole back valve cover is basically covered by the wiper cowling in the engine bay. So doing this and installing the intake and all that wiring makes our lives a whole lot easier when we go to put the motor back in the car. So now we'll finish up with the transmission wire and now we're gonna get back over to working on the harness in the car. So we're gonna start by cutting back all of those wires there move the original cap back to keep the order correct and now we're just going to go through like i mentioned the same exact process you saw me do on the engine harness we're going to strip crimp and heat shrink all of these connectors and then get the new connector end pinned on and get it connected up to the engine harness
So now we got all of the new wires into the new connector. We got the new rubber gasket put in and the end cap snapped on. Now here you're going to see the blue piece that we saw in the old harness. It's actually from this side. It's the locking part of the actual chassis harness to hold the pins into that. We have the finished product, new connector, new ends of the wires, all heat shrink wrapped and crimped together. This part of the harness is good to go. We'll tape this back up to the rest of the loom and then we'll be able to connect the engine harness up to it. Fingers crossed, it should work out perfectly. So that is gonna be all for this video, guys. I hope you found it really interesting. I hope it was helpful. If you guys need any info on repairing vehicle wiring harness connectors, if you found the video interesting, if you liked it, or you know somebody else that might, or if you want to see the rest of this project, please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share the video. As always, thank you guys for watching, have a great day, and hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.